Good morning, Scrapping Friends. I'm Deborah Kozlovic, and I'm a Creative Memories Independent Advisor from Australia. I showed a technique using the um, Mysterious Border Punch that was done by Noreen Smith, and that was in the Creative Life magazine. I'm sure that's what it was. Um, and I also did that same design in the Rainbow Ripple. Now, I've had a request from Maria, you know who you are, um, and she wanted me to give a little demo on the Rainbow Ripple Decorative Border Punch. So that is what I'm going to show you today. So the Rainbow Ripple is a standalone border punch. It's not a chain punch. And also this punch came out with the December deals in 2022. So with the punch design that I'm going to do today, I've decided to work with these photos here of my grandchildren underwater. And I've decided to use the Mermaid Cove. I thought that the Mermaid Code will go great with these photos. So I've pulled out um, my stickers and I've also got the paper there. So I found the paper that I think might match with my photos that I will use today. And I will also be using a uh, eggplant cardstock for my base. And then I have the coordinating designer paper from the Mermaid Code paper pack. So I'm just going to put aside my eggplant cardstock. So now I'm going to work with exactly the same technique as we did before, is folding your 12 by 12 paper into a triangle. So lining it up evenly and just giving it a slight crease in the middle just enough so you know that it's folded and then you've got your ends meeting so it all matches up so now I'm going to get my punch and with the border punch we're still going to start off as if we're going to making a border so I'm still going to be lining it up with the black lines and to do that, I'm going to have my opening of my point lined up on the black lines. And then I will do my first punch. And then I'm just going to continue along and then matching it onto the blue plate. I should say onto the plate where the blue design is and making sure that my paper is at the back of that housing. And then continue to punch as if I was making a normal border. So I'm going to do that right to the end. Also making sure that your paper's at the back of that housing. And then going on to my last punch. So just lining it up. Making sure that it's back and punch. So then now I've got my edge punched. And when I said before it was a standalone punch, so with the standalone punch, it's not going to be coming apart from your page. With the chain punch, it comes apart. So now I'm going to bring in my 12 inch trimmer. And I'm just going to line that edging up from the bottom and I'm going to cut it at one and a half. Actually, I've decided this edging here, I'm going to line that on the quarter line mark on the trimmer. So you've got that edging at the edge of your cutting strip and that's where I lined it up on. I actually lined mine up on the edge of our cutting strip which is from the cutting line to the end is a quarter. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to cut my middle base. So I'm just going to open that up Thank you. 
So just measuring this now, this measures at nearly 10 and a half. So I'm still going to be cutting it at 10 by 10. So you're just cutting one side and then the other at 10. So you've got a 10 by 10 square. So I'm going to bring in my cardstock now. Then I'm going to open up my border that I just did. So now working out which side I want to sit that border if I want to have it on the coloured side or the purple. So I'm just going to turn this over. I think I might do the edging with the purple and then have the coloured in the middle because I think that will match better with my photos. So it's going to be looking like that but then I'm thinking I might, because it's a little bit bigger, there's not much gap in between and I do want to use a border strip in mine. So you can actually do yours exactly like this and having the 10 by 10 square in the middle and then doing your edging without using any border stickers. I was thinking maybe that I might put, you know, something like this, all the bubbles around the edging of mine on the inside, which then I would cut mine down. So I think I might take mine down to nine and a half. So then again, I'm just going to cut two ends at nine and a half. Just seeing which ones I cut before. So lining that up. And then nine and a half. So then placing that down now and lining that up on the edge, it does give me a little bit more to play with on the edging on the inside so then I can add my bubbles around. And also these little off cuts that we have here, you can actually blend them in onto your layout. So that way there's no wastage of any designer paper or anything like that. So we're going to stick this down and then we'll lay the photos. So now that I've adhered down my edge, I only just use repositional tape for that. So I could set that up um, in place and that way I was able to lift it if I had to. So then for the middle base, I'm just going to be using some tape runner on the edge. Just putting it around on the edge. And then also I'm just going to use a little bit of repositional on that crease in the middle. So when I have my blue down, so I just also want to leave just a small border around the edge of my page. So it's probably about a quarter of an inch around. So this one just seems a little bit up, so I'm just gonna readjust that one. Getting my multi-purpose tool. These borders, when you punch them out, because you're using it as a round, you know, your page, sometimes they sit funny when you adhere them down. So just lift it slightly and just readjust it. 
and that's a good reason why you know like using the repositional tape and you can actually lift it and then you can re you know adhere it back onto your cardstock so you're not ripping your design or technique that you just completed onto your cardstock so i wouldn't suggest if you use the tape runner so now that we've got our photos so just working out where i would have and place my photos onto my layout i didn't really want to shorten these or make them any shorter i wanted to work with them so they can have them you know at this size so i'm just playing around and seeing what works the best mm. Um, so I think I might have maybe so it's something like so so just overlapping slightly Oh, yeah, that's going to cover his face. That might be able to go up. So I could have them something like that. If I like, or maybe I might cut a little bit more off the top on this one and place it just in the middle there, maybe overlapping these ones just a little bit. And then... Yeah, I think I might trim that one a little bit more because I wanted to use the three photos on the layout. So I think I might do it something like that and just trim this one a little bit shorter. So now that if I bring in my bubble stickers that I wanted to use, so I'm going to start from the outside. So I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of the cardstock. So I'm just going to put the bubbles down along the edge of the designer paper. And then I'm just going to trim that off. So I can actually reuse that little bit there. So now with the other one, I'm going to do exactly the same. So just spinning that around. And now working on this edge. So I'm just going to do exactly the same. I'm going to go this way. So just adhering that border sticker onto the layout. So now that I'm at the edge here, I'm just going to try and do a little curve so it matches the other end. So I'll just pull that up so you can actually see what I just did. I'm just going to hear this other little piece back on the sticker sheet so I'm just going to move my photos and as you can see all I done was just curve the end so it made you know the round circle bit as we have at the on either side so the only thing that I need to do now is I'm going to consider if I'm going to back my photos I'm not quite sure if I want to back my photos at this stage but I'll complete my layout and I'll give you a little squeeze sneak peek at the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed this technique Maria and I'd love to see your design that you will complete with the rainbow ripple 
border punch. If there's any other questions, if you want to know anything else or any other technique with any kind of border punch, please just let me know and I'm happy to do a little video for you. Um, please subscribe, like, give me some love and happy scrapping everyone.